Hello everyone and welcome. The other day I had taken a video of my V60 pour over technique and I uploaded it to Instagram. After re-watching it, I realized how different it is to my original suggestions that I made in my first ever video on this channel, which I'll link here if you haven't seen it. So I thought, why not bring it to YouTube and do a bit of commentary on my new methods and why I do things differently than before. One quick thing before we dive in, I want to say that my technique is heavily influenced by the work of Jonathan Gagne. He is an astrophysicist who also has a passion for coffee and writes a coffee blog called Coffee at Astra, which I'll link in the description below. A lot of the science and techniques that I use are from him, and I recommend that you go and check out his work. So starting the brew now, I weigh and grind my coffee. I'm using 22 grams in with about 374 grams of water added for a 1 to 17 brew ratio. Next, I grab my paper filter and fold it along the seam so that it fits properly in the dripper. I do zero it out here because I like to be consistent for every coffee I make and even when rinsing the filter and preheating the system, I like to use the same amount of water each time which is about 100 grams. I dump the rinse water of course, grab my ground coffee, and make sure you zero out the scale before you add the coffee. You'll see I actually lost 0.5 grams that might have been left behind in the grinder or stuck to the sides of the grounds container. It's not a big deal, you just adjust the amount of water you use slightly. Now we want to create a hole in the grounds, and I know this is often a debated issue, but if the goal in the next phase is to get all of the coffee wet as evenly and quickly as possible, then it really makes sense to give the water a hand in the places where there is the most coffee. I think it's the only reasonable way to get the bottom layer of coffee saturated at around the same time as the top layer. Using a chopstick is something that I actually took from watching Gagne and it works really well. You bring it to the bottom and go around in circles. This helps shape the hole in a similar way to the conical shape of the V60 itself. I'm not certain, but I think this may help the water travel to all areas of the coffee bed as quickly as possible. I probably should have gotten the hole a bit more centered, but this should be okay. Now I bring my water back up to 210 degrees before starting to pour. I've been using hotter and hotter water lately, and now I'm essentially at boiling. I find the higher temperature really helps extract the coffee nicely, especially as I only brew light roasts. We now want to add about two to three times the amount of water as you started with in ground coffee. For me, that's typically around 50 grams. Then I swirl the V60 for a few seconds because as I said, we are trying to evenly saturate all the coffee as quickly as possible. The reason I don't use a spoon anymore is because from both Gagne and Scott Rail, people I really respect in the industry, it seems they have concerns about how a spoon may not be as effective. It might not reach far enough down, or you might be causing too much agitation and movement that can cause fines migration, which is where fine particles of coffee move toward the filter and can clog the pores, leading to long drawdown times and over extraction. So I think I'll be sticking to the swirl, and you'll notice I also do it between pores as this should help keep coffee off the sides of the filter as well. Now, after we've let the bloom sit for 45 seconds, we will add the first portion of water. I'm going to go up to 200 grams on the scale, and I'll be adding the water with some very important aspects in mind. You want to ensure the flow of water is as high as you can go while still maintaining a stream that drops straight down into the coffee. You also want to pour quite high, but not to the point where you hear splashing on the surface of the water. This has to do with what is called the breakpoint of water, where a stream of water inevitably turns into drops at some point the higher you raise the kettle. The splashing sound is the water droplets hitting the surface of the slurry. Your goal is to have the stream of water enter the coffee slurry just before it turns into droplets. Gagne explains all of this in one of his blog posts and talks about how the water is agitated differently based on your pouring height, so I'd check that out 
if you want more details. Up to 200 grams now, I'll give the V60 a swirl, maybe not as long as the bloom phase, but enough to encourage the coffee to move down off the filter. We will let the water draw down until there is about an inch of water left above the coffee. I'll get my kettle back up to 210 degrees and we start pouring our next chunk of water all the way up to our goal of 374, which I should have actually done less because we started with 21.5, but that's fine. Letting the coffee drain between pours is also a very interesting subject, and without getting too much into the science, just know that the idea is to let the most concentrated liquid drain out so that when we add fresh, clean water, we are able to increase the rate of extraction and pull even more from our coffee. But you don't let it drain entirely because the temperature will drop significantly if the water goes below the coffee bed. All right, so I've added all the water, actually got too full there and had to wait a second, gave it a final swirl, and now we wait for it to draw down. One thing I should mention is that I didn't do a great job of pouring. I should have focused more of the pouring time on the center, as this is where the most layers of coffee are, and the agitation from the water falling into the coffee bed is most useful when it lands in the center. Another thing I tried, which you might have noticed, was to pour some water directly on the sides of the filter early on. And I was attempting to get rid of the coffee grounds stuck to the side. As you can see at the end, it didn't exactly work. I might try this again, but it might not be worth it, and I'm still not sure if it's the worst thing to have the finest particles of coffee left alone on the sides. At least it means they aren't clogging the filter or being overly extracted and affecting the flavor. So that's it, my new and improved techniques. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you do at home for your pour overs? Do you think you'll take something from this video and try it out? Let me know in the comments below and if you haven't subscribed, please do, as I try to release weekly content. I will see you all again next week and I hope you have a great day.